Any questions? <laughs> Elizabeth? Um, I guess I kind of was interested in whether you had any data about when handshakes first evolved because um, it seems like a relatively modern phenomenon where aggression has kind of gone down. So does that really correlate with your data? Um, yes, you, you would think that that would be the case. And of course, it's always very hard to get behavioral evidence from the fossil record. Um, so you know, we don't see this. But, but if you look at paintings, for example, from some of our earlier ancestors, you do see a lot of exchange of hands and a lot of, a lot of that kind of uh, behavior. Um, but really, you only have to look at how perfectly two hands fit in a handshake, I think, to come to that particular conclusion. Now, you'll notice, too, that as we've evolved ways of decolonizing our hands, that is, using hand sanitizer, etc., the handshake has become an even more popular greeting and become even more global and more used. So I think that this is another indication that you know our bodies really are trying to get back to our earlier evolutionary state. I would just like to come and shake your hand. <laughs> Yeah, he has no idea where my hand has been. Hey, so is this thing where you go, whoa, so that's actually friendly, eh? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, just like yeah, the high five and the fist bump. All of those are very friendly yeah. greetings. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if you've incorporated the work of uh, Cameron and Comfort from 2008, who discussed uh, the hand evolving to be able to peel bananas. Um, see, this is the problem with some of these very specific theories, is that they just don't have the explanatory th a power of the handshake hypothesis. So although it's possible that, you know, bananas are a food that we evolved with, you know, being primates and so on, um, I really just feel that there is no substitute for the parsimony of the handshake hypothesis. Oh, nice. <laughs>